Hello, my name is Alec, and welcome to How to Write a Persuasive Speech. Alright, if you happen to stumble on this video by chance, and are only interested in how to actually write a persuasive speech and deliver a speech, then feel free to jump ahead to the next section where the explanation begins. If you are one of my students, however, do watch the whole thing. Before we jump into the main topic of today's video, I'll give you a quick walkthrough on how you should watch this video and what is the purpose of this lesson. As you may have noticed, today's class is a bit different than the usual drill. You're not on a call right now, and instead, you're listening to my sweet, sweet boys on YouTube. The main goal of this activity is that instead of covering the explanation of the topic during class, you are learning ahead of time, and when we have our next session, we get to work on your speech right away. This means that we will not go over the contents of today's video tomorrow. Yeah, of course, you can ask me questions, and if something isn't super clear, you know, I'll explain. And of course, I'll ask questions to make sure that you were not playing Fortnite while watching this video. Additionally, there's an activity that you should complete on Blackboard that will count towards your grade and will also be proof that you were in class today. So it's important to submit it in time. Now, because this video is not 50 minutes long, I mean, imagine the horror, you should have ample time to complete the activity before the class is officially over. So to sum it up, watch this video, take notes, answer the activity, and be ready to start working on your persuasive speech tomorrow. You got it? Good. So let's crack into it. What is a persuasive speech? Well, in a nutshell, a persuasive speech is a kind of speech that aims to convince the audience to believe a certain viewpoint. Uh, typically, we think of a speech to be delivered orally, to be spoken. However, if you've ever read an article or an opinion on a forum, that also counts as persuasive speech. If anyone is trying to convince you of anything, that counts as persuasive speech. That ad you were forced to watch before watching my unmonetized video, that's persuasive speech. Your classmate trying to get you to try maple syrup on your bacon, also persuasive speech. That YouTuber arguing that Star Wars The Last Jedi failed because of political correctness and not because of its horrible writing, is also persuasive speech. In short, we encounter persuasive speech every day, everywhere. However, whether those speeches are effective or not, that's a whole different story. So how can we make sure that our speech is effective, that is, in fact, persuasive? Well, it all boils down to the following aspects. Ethos, pathos, and logos. Or in plain English, ethos is being credible. This makes people want to hear you and give credit to what you're saying, even if they may disagree with you. Pathos is the emotional appeal, making the audience feel something through your message. Sadness, anger, happiness, whatever helps you get your point across. Logos, argument, logic, the ideas that can help establish a conclusion that makes sense. Now, of course, that it's not as simple as that. There are many elements that help build each of these aspects. For example, as your teacher, you are already inclined to believe what I'll say or at least consider what I am presenting. In that case, who is speaking, but even more importantly, who is listening, will impact the effect of the message. Likewise, the setting, body language, and even the color of your clothes can have an impact in the emotional appeal of your speech. Your tone of voice, your hand gestures, and the overall ambience of the presentation can impact how people perceive your message. Finally, even though we could think that a good argument is enough to win a debate or convince people to take a vaccine, well, you get the picture. So how can you write and deliver an effective persuasive speech? Well, there are some strategies that you can implement to help your odds. Make it personal. And no, I don't mean that you should insult your audience. What I mean is tell a story, open with an anecdote. How did adding maple syrup to your bacon make your life 10 times better? How was the weather that morning or were the birds singing? Well, after you poured that maple syrup, I mean, they surely were singing, right? 
if you were talking about art or some artistic expression, as you guys should, if you are my students, what does it mean to you? How did dance improve your life? What does it feel like to be in a band? Making your audience laugh or care for you is half Making your audience laugh or care for you is half the battle when it comes to persuasion. Number two, your arguments don't need to be bulletproof. They just need to make sense. Sure, if you're in a debate team or trying to pitch an energy reform, okay, your arguments should be bulletproof. However, if you're trying to convince me that I should give Suicide Squad a chance, then all you need is to make sense. Make sure your arguments follow a logical structure and that the delivery is confident and coherent. The simplest structure is the idea is good because A, B, C, therefore believe the idea. It's a work in progress, but the idea basically goes like this. The Big Carl is better than the Big Mac because it's bigger, it's tastier, and the ads are funny. Therefore, the Big Carl is better than the Big Mac. And sure, taste is subjective, bigger isn't always better, and Carl Jr.'s ads have become more and more questionable over the years. But the arguments make sense, so chances are you're at least going to consider my viewpoints, and that counts as a victory when it comes to persuasive speech. Number three, common sense makes sense. This is one of my favorites because it has great persuasive power, but it comes with great responsibility. Appeals to common sense are everywhere, and basically what that is, is that you start your argument with something like, well, everyone knows that, because everyone knows this. If you, listener, don't know this, then you must be out of your mind. The thing is that even though we can use this strategy for good, for example, it's obvious that putting detergent in your mouth is not a good idea, it can also be used to cause great harm especially when it's followed by talking about a group of people or something that needs scientific evidence to actually make sense. So use this with caution. Number four, read the room. It works for jokes and it works for your speech. If your audience is allergic to maple syrup, it doesn't matter how good your pitch is. They won't add it to their bacon. If they do, they might die. And we don't want that. So make sure to consider who will listen to your speech and it will save you heartache and public prosecution. Number five, sometimes people won't budge. Let's face it, even if you present people with solid evidence delivered masterfully and sprinkled with tasteful jokes, sometimes they will continue to deny global warming. And sure, it sucks, but there is not much we can do about it. Finally, because this is a basic introduction to persuasive speech, we're not going to go into the nitty-gritty of it. To conclude today's video, let's make a quick recap of the main points to consider when writing your persuasive speech. Number one, ethos. How credible people find you. Are you an authority on the topic? Then you probably can tick this box off. If you're not, make sure to appear confident, knowledgeable, and trustworthy. In other words, fake it till you make it. Two, pathos. How does your message make people feel? Unless you're a politician or you're a parent stuck in the 90s, it's better to make your audience feel good. Go for a lighthearted, funny, wholesome note. And even if you don't convince people, at least they'll leave your talk with a good taste in their mouths. Number three, logos. How good are your arguments? Well, if they make sense and seem reasonable, they're already pretty good. Back them up with some facts or evidence and you've got yourself a winning combo. Lastly, have fun with it. Okay, I mean, this applies mainly to my students, but it can help other people. Presenting a speech in class is a good opportunity to try out new things, to be a bit extra. Maybe you're a natural born speaker and you didn't even know it. And anyway, that's it for today's video. Make sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions, and don't forget to check the activity on Blackboard. Have a good one, and I'll see you in our next class. Good day.